We are hearing all of our presenters. We're so glad to have her, and she's recognizing some of you. So uh, we're pleased that Joe is here. The historic preservation, creating a sense of place. Mm -hmm. That's Take my name. That's the title. Um, again, Joe Wesolowski, historic preservation, creating a sense of place. Um, I have a question for you all. Oh, well, actually, I need to do my thank yous, of course. <laughs> First, I would like to say, uh, thank uh, Dr. Minda Jacob and um, Dr. Denise, uh, Dr. Denise Marangolo from the History Department. Um, they helped me out extensively throughout this whole research process and get, gave me great feedback about, you know, artistic, my artistic presentation, my uh, written component. They did a fabulous job. Um, then I would obviously like to thank uh, Ms. Salter over here who stuck with me for, what, like three years? Through sickness, through health, through good times, bad times, she uh, she stuck in there. Uh, um, and now I would like to thank uh, design, designer Lanu and uh, Mr. McAlpine because without them giving me the feedback, I'll, I'll never forget. Dr. Lanu, she comes up to me, she says, "Joe, own this presentation, own this capstone project," and it really did stick with me. And then Mr. McAlpine and IDS 330 it just broadened my horizon about becoming a progressive human being and being dignified. Um, and um, the, the whole IDS department I'd like to thank uh, Special Collections, Mickey Miller from the UND Architecture uh, Program, um, and Trevor Blank who helped out with Philcrest. And I would also like to thank my friends and my family who's, who are here now. Um, I'm so glad to see uh, some friendly faces. <laughs> so first, I would like to know, what is your sense of place here at UMBC? What is a memorable moment that you had, you've had and experienced, and where is, where did, where did this uh, event happen? Anyone would like to raise your hand? <laughs> Mr. McAlpine? Well, I think Giffen Hill is great. When I first came here, we used to have a reception for students. Um, Designer Lanou would host the INDS department, this beautiful space overlooking the athletic fields. And how many of you know where Giffen Hill is? Yeah. <laughs> Given Hill is over by the, the soccer fields sort of there's two big trees, uh, oak trees that you could uh, go get. Uh, anyone, anyone else? Chris? Well, I remember like being a freshman and playing lots of sports and stuff out on like by Patapsco between Patapsco and Potomac and the dining hall and stuff like that. Okay. See, these are the collective memories that I'm looking for um, uh, to create a sense of place. Um, so, yes. okay, so what is place and how does it relate to preservation? Um, first, you have landscapes. From there, you have uh, spaces. Within those spaces are places. Uh, this is just like, for example, you have Baltimore County. Within Baltimore County, you have UMBC. Within UMBC, you have the place of, let's say, like Fine Arts Building. Um, so these places are formed by collective memory, just as I asked you all um, a little while ago. I wanted to hear your experiences. Uh, from there you have the establishment of a uh, place which leads to this desire to preserve those places. Um, and when you preserve these places, that's this, there's this whole big um, community begins to be formed. And then eventually you will, when you establish this community, you will evolve as a community. Um, so this is, these are my, this is my integration strategy. I took two of them and I basically smashed them together because I felt that having two separate uh, uh, bridging strategies just, or integration strategies just wasn't appropriate. You first had, or my, um, my integration strategy is bridging the complex and multicultural explanation action gap. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit wordy. But well, basically, this, uh, this contains three components. First, you have to define the place um, and the preservation. Second, you have to portray, um, portray the uh, place and preservation in an artistic format. You gotta give the face to the site. And then third, you have to allow for a public response um, because you have to be held accountable. You may make a mistake, but you have to give the public the response um, the uh, option of you know responding to your findings. So this was my ERCAD project. Thank you, Janet, for giving me that nine-foot space. <laughs> uh, and I, I have it also in the back uh, if you would like to take a look at it. Um, you can see there's five different um, 
uh, sites on campus that I felt were hidden gems. And the rightmost poster is where students, faculty, alumni, I had I think about th almost 30 uh, participants write on my board and write their sense of place. So the question uh, that I asked or proposed while at ERCAD was, um, how do we design and develop UMBC in the future? I've, been li I've lived here for five years and I feel a deep connection to this land. Um, so should we design based strictly upon economics, aesthetics his and uh, historic historical factors, or sustainability and caring for the environment? Or maybe we should just try to figure out um, different ways we could incorporate you know, these three t together. So again, these are the five sites. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you a short little description. Uh, my project was called For the Old Towards the New, Shaping the UMBC Campus. Um, I have first, right here, the Arts and Humanities building, which is being built on North Campus. Uh, I was lucky enough to have Mickey Miller, who's running the, uh, the site operations. Uh, he gave me a tour throughout the whole facility. Um, I got sprayed by the fireproof coating that they put on the walls. It was, it was a good experience. Um, so basically, with this building, it's a lead certified, um, lead silver certified building that has a uh, white covered roof. Like these are just a little of the elements to it. It's, there's a white covered roof which will cool, help cool down the buildings because obviously the rate, rate sunlight will um, be deflected off. Um, they're going to have like, a bunch of recycling bins. Um, but the problem that I had with it was that it, the design component was mainly focused on low uh, maintenance costs. And when that's one of your main objectives to design a building, I just feel that that misses the uh, other aspects which could be incorporated into the design. Um, so other aspects would be, um, I, I chose the Baltimore Manual Labor School and Hillcrest buildings that used to, uh, that used to be housed on this campus. Baltimore Manual Labor School was uh, ran by the sta uh, Stabler family. Um, it was built, uh, let me see, where is that? You can see it's this uh, nice romantic style building um, that housed 65 um, in, um, uh, inner city boys that you know basically had nowhere to go. They were considered the vermin of the inner city and basically the Stabler family grew up on this whole belief, the Quaker belief of you take in your community, um, you know, we'll, we'll house you, we'll shelter you, and most impo importantly, we're going to give you education. And I just felt that that needs to remain in our school's mission. We need to realize we are prosperous students here at UMBC. And it, it's always been like that since the be very beginnings of the farmland at UMBC. Second, I have Hillcrest, um, which was also a very aesthetically pleasing building that had a lot of history. Um, you can see it's a very neoclassical, it looks like an actual um, college building uh, that you could probably see at like UVA. Um, this, this, house, this was the first institution in America that housed the criminally insane but also tried to rehabilitate them to go back into the community. Uh, there, were, there were also World War I veterans that had shell shock that um, were taken in by this facility that was part of Spring Grove. Um, it chose UMBC as a location. It used to be located on uh, West Hill, um, but they chose this location because they wanted a place separate from the uh, Springer, um, um, uh, the, the hospital campus. Um, so UMBC being farmland and having the, the uh, Baltimore Manual School, which burned down in 1917, gone, um, they were able to construct this in 1921. Um, it remains, you know, in existence until 1960, about 1960, where basically we, they had two ex escapes, uh, attempted escapes, and that kind of, you know, diminished the need for this building and gave it a bad, you know, publicity. Um, so UMBC uh, bought up the land; they re renovated it. Uh, 1966, they used it as the first administrative building. They housed a lot of like fraternities and student unions. Um, but in 2000, uh, it was condemned because of asbestos, and, <laughs> and um, it, it's, it's kind of a shame because they housed like the Rat Skeller, which was this like party basement thing where you know people play live music and stuff like that. There was a lot of history in this building. In 2007, um, despite Trevor Blank's attempts to save the building, 
it was um, destroyed. And it, it, it's, it's most likely because of the clause that was included in the new fine arts building uh, proposal that said we will build the, fine arts, the new fine arts building if we could destroy Hillcrest. Every time the school tried to destroy Hillcrest separately, it would always fail. Um, okay, and the last two really um, connect to me. Uh, we have the Joseph Boys Tree Partnership, which is part of the HRG Trail, um, which Dr. Lanou has lots of experience in. Um, and then there's the uh, Conservation and Environmental Research Area, uh, which is also called SARA. And um, it, I helped uh, restore in uh, Professor Lanou's um, 480 class um, part of the trail to make it usable and walkable for students from Science 100 and her future classes to go on and you know be one with wilderness and understand um, what sustainable, sustainability really means. So basically, I'm trying to. So basically, I just want to have everyone recognize these spots and and hopefully go to them and have discussion in these areas. So from there, I had again this this map um, and people could uh, you know mark where their sense of place was and add their own voice. Um, so what makes this interdisciplinary? Uh, I had three different uh, topics: um, public history, documentary photography, and business management. Public history, I wanted to see the social impact. Uh, documentary photography was important to give a face to that textual information. And then business management was to like, um, be able to approach the big names, you know, like Mickey Miller in, a, in an appropriate fashion. And um, yes. So methodology, um, you know, I just had to design a compelling poster and um, do a literature, res uh, literature res research at source collections. And what's the so what? So basically, I want to expose these unknown gems and um, make the community feel invested. UMBC needs to realize that civic engagement is, is necessary. We need to reach back out into the community um, and have civil discussion. So, any questions? Truth or dare, maybe? <laughs> further maybe like outside of UMBC with your this, and use the study of um, you know preservation and sense of place? Um, yeah, right now I'm taking an American Studies class um, with Dr. Nicole King called Preserving Baybrook and we're trying to, uh, well what my job is is to do therapeutic, therapeutic uh, programs with uh, the younger uh, students in the area um, and we do really want to develop this sense of place of this uh, South Baltimore community that had the, um, the, uh, the, during the 1940s, the, the building of the Liberty ships. But then after that, after the war was over, that's when they started deconstructing the ships and cancer rates started going way up. And the place really, t today is very, I don't want to say depressing, but it needs help. It needs, it needs, place needs to be established because you have all these different factions. You know, you have Brooklyn, which competes with Curtis Bay, which can be, you know, competes with Fairfield. And, you know, I, what my job is, is to really try to get the, the community together and we're going to throw this event uh, May 14th, um, where hopefully all the, the whole, both, all, you know, four communities come together at the Polish Home Hall and really do um, interact with each other. With one each other, with one, with one another, um, creating that civil discussion, which is very important. I, I'm it? interested in this um, combination of things you talked about. On the one hand, sort of asking people, "What's your experience of space?" and and your map where people spoke of their experience of space, and it seems to me that's different and maybe complementary to what you've done in your project, which is to bring forward information and teach people things that might help them create a sense of space. Exactly. Uh, and, and I think having those two together is really interesting, and I, I would love to see more happen with what you've done about Hillcrest and about the manual training school, so that that's a part of people's sense of the place 
if they don't know about it, it can't be part of their sense of place. Exactly. Um, I spoke with um, multiple people um, about the Hillcrest uh, Cupola, which is next to the uh, Facilities Management Building, uh, which is by um, uh, West Hill. Um, and they have in a, this big box that's exposed to the elements, the uh, Hillcrest Cupola. It's, you know, probably 20 feet tall, 15 feet wide, and um, uh, my advisors and um, other, um, you know, alum especially alumni, they said, well, you know, why can't you restore that and make that a place, you know, put that on campus to create a, a, a space for interaction, you know, um, which I, I feel is a wonderful idea, and I really do want to do that after I graduate. But um, we, we, we did, like, look at maybe we should, like, uh, designate Giffen Hill as, like, the historic hill where we have, you know, the oak trees, you know, the plaque where um, the Baltimore Manual Labor School now sits. You know, make that the collective memory of UMBC's past. So if, if you're for it, send me an email and uh, I'll get the signatories. We'll get another and, student to follow your footsteps yeah. to commend all hell, right? <laughs> and, uh, I, I think I was very uh, taken by the knowledge that Joe uh, provided. I, I, I've been here for 16 years. I had no idea about so much of this history. And, the cupola idea is just, I mean, really worth pursuing. And I was wondering, uh, what do you think are the best ways to get people, you know, activated and interested to, to maybe take um, responsibility to sharing your, um, you know, in their well, um, is Emily still? Yes, Emily's still here. She, her artistic presentation, it's perfect. She interacts with the ground. She, you know, she sends out the Facebook invites saying, come here, watch my dance performance at the Joseph Borey Sculpture Garden. And, you know, understand that this is a place where I want you all to meet up. This is a place where I want you to be creative. I don't want this to be a strict, you know, just formal learning pro uh, process. I want you to come and experience something. Thanks for coming from Enda. That's my advice. That's great. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much, Joe. We're just a little bit behind, so uh, anybody else? <laughs> and we hope that you'll keep, you can keep these posters because we want to celebrate them up on the yes. table of our fine arts and then maybe get them laminated and put them up on the table or something. Like it. So, Good uh, deal. We'll, we'll try to keep it going.